this is a video about what is binary. Before primary school we learn how to count and the system that we've used since as long as anyone can remember is called base 10 decimal. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then well 10 but I've put here 0. Um, and with those digits I can represent any number I want in decimal. These are supposed to be hands, by the way, um, and the reason that it is 10 is because we have 10 fingers on the hand, on both hands. So that's a convenient way of counting. But then computers came along and they do things slightly differently. A system was invented by Gottfried Leibniz to um, use ones and zeros to represent numbers. And now, if you think about it, everything is binary. Your data about you, whether you can or cannot get that credit card, it's all down to those ones and zeros. Everything is ones and zeros. And if you've seen the film The Matrix, uh, it's not probably not far from that, really. So ones and zeros came about um, because of voltage signals, high and low. And if you look at my diagram at the top there, we've got voltage signals high and low, ones and zeros. Ones represent the high voltage signal, zeros represent the low. And using that, using those electrical pulses, uh, we can represent numbers, we can represent data. And binary uses ones and zeros, so there's two digits, hence the name binary or base two. At the heart of your computer is the processor or central processing unit, CPU. Um, this one's an Intel one, but other brands exist as well. Now that processor can only process ones and zeros. So it needs to have everything um, in ones and zeros, because that's how it processes data, that's how it um, reads data, that's how it send, sends out instructions. It's all as ones and zeros. So everything you do on the computer, when you type type on the computer, when you record sound into YouTube uh, and you create an image, it's all stored as ones and zeros uh, because that's what the processor can process, those ones and zeros. So those voltage signal ones and zeros are processed by the processor and they represent things, everything you've done, your images, your document, everything you've done on the computer. So in this video, I'm just going to keep it simple and look at two number systems. There are three in the GCSE exam, but if we just look at two for now, binary to decimal and decimal to binary, you'll need to convert a binary number into decimal and a decimal number into binary. This could be a typical exam question. Convert this binary number into decimal, and it would be worth about one mark to do that. Okay, so here I've got a binary number, and I want it in decimal there. So the first thing I do is I draw myself a table like this. I probably use a ruler, not just draw it freehand like that. It doesn't particularly matter. But I draw myself the table and then I put these place values in here. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. That represents 8 bits and that's a byte. There's 8 bits in a byte and there is a byte. I'm going to do another video on data, so we'll cover that in a separate video. But here is the byte. And so what I do is I put the ones and zeros into the placeholders here. Like that. So now what I need to do is add these up and I make my decimal number. Where I've got a 0, I do not add, but where I've got a 1, I need to add that number. So I look at that, I've got a 1 in the 32 placeholder there. So I need to add 32 to 16, and that is 48. Then I look further on, I need to add the 2, that gives me 50, and add the 1. My answer to that, for one mark, just move this up, equals... 51 in base 10 in decimal. Just a little tip for you there. If you can see here, there's a 1 by the 1 placeholder there. A 1 has been placed there. 
that means the number is going to be odd. So if I say a 1 there, it's going to be an odd number. So I can kind of guess if I've got that right. If this is an odd number, yes it is. I think I've got that right. Okay? But do remember that for most exams, you're doing this without a calculator. So you need to be able to be quick on the, the old addition. Okay? It's just one mark that. You don't want to spend too long on it. But make sure you get it right. It's not a particularly difficult question, that. And that is how you convert from binary to decimal. Another typical exam question. Convert this decimal number into binary. And the decimal number I've got there is 142. And again, this would just be one mark. But you need to get it right. It's not particularly hard, this. So what I need to do is I need to look along this table. I draw myself this table out again. OK, eight, eight bits there. And I go along the table and I say to myself, right, will 128 go into 142? Definitely. I'm going to need that, so I place a 1 by that. OK. If I had 64, it's definitely going to be too much. I don't need to figure that one out. 64 would be far too much, far higher than 142 if I add these two together. Now, um, do I need 32? Well, that will give me 160, which is far too much. Um, do I need 16? Well, that will give me 144, which is two more than I want. So now um, I'm on to 8. Do I need 8? Absolutely, because that will get me to 136. Again, I'm doing this without a calculator. You need to be able to do it without a calculator. Um, so I'm at 136. So I'm at the moment I'm 6 short of where I need to be. So I think I'll take a 4, OK, that'll get me to 140 and I'll take the 2 and then I won't need the 1 there, like a 0 can go there. So if I need the number, I place a 1 in the place value, if I don't need it, it's a 0. And my binary number, 142 in binary, is 1000110. Zero, 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 one, one, zero. That will be my answer, OK, you could write that underneath. Um, but if you've got that right, there's, there's your mark there. That is fine. And again, as I said to you just now, there's a zero in the place value one. So that's going to be an even number. So I'm fairly certain I've got that right.